let us now talk about the neural control and coordination in frogs. Amphibians like frogs also have very well developed systems of control and coordination. And there are two like ours, neural control as well as the chemical control. That is one where the nervous system works and the other is the endocrine glands. So here we are talking about the nervous part. So neural control and coordination can we are talking of the complete nervous system can be divided into one CNS that is central nervous system and central nervous system comprises of the brain and the spinal cord. So it has two parts brain and spinal cord. Then comes the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system we know is just nerves. So we divide these nerves into two categories on the basis of the origin. So we will talk about cranial nerves. That is the nerves which arise from the brain and the spinal nerves. These things are pretty much like what we see in case of humans. And then the third system, third part is the autonomous nervous system. Autonomous nervous system can again be divided into two categories. That is sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So this is how we classify the complete nervous system in case of frogs. The brain is enclosed in cranium enclosed in cranium that is the brain box and it is also protected by meninges so there are two meninges in case of humans we talk about three meninges here these two meninges are pia arachnoid matter And the second one is dura matter. We have three separate pia matter, arachnoid matter, and dura matter. Whereas here there are only two pia arachnoid are the fused ones. The brain is divided again into three parts. So we have these three parts of the brain that is forebrain. Then the midbrain and the hindbrain. Forebrain has three parts olfactory lobes. This, these are paired lobes, and as the name tells us, olfaction that means helping in the sense of smell. Then cerebral hemispheres and unpaired diencephalon. So all these structures are very similar to what we have in our brain but not that developed but still that differentiation is there. Midbrain has only optic lobes and this is a pair only two. We have optic quadrigemina that is a mammalian character. So here we say they have optic bigemina. Quadrigemina is only found in mammals. So only two lobes are there. Hindbrain has two parts that is cerebellum and medulla. This medulla continues with the spinal cord. The medulla emerges from that opening in the skull which is called foramen magnum and it continues with spinal cord. 
So all these parts are pretty much same as far as the names are concerned. Now let us come to the cranial nerves. Very important. There are 10 pairs of cranial nerves. 10 pairs of cranial nerves. Many a times questions have been asked on this particular thing. There are two things which we have to remember. And that is where this particular number helps us. Humans, we have dicondylic skull. The occipital bone has two semicircular bulges which are called the occipital condyles. And because of which our skull becomes dicondylic. Frogs also have dicondylic skull. We will talk about that when we come to skeletal system. We have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and frogs have 10 pairs of cranial nerves. So, dicondylic skull is a common thing. We have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and frogs have 10. That is how we differentiate because the skull related information is same in case of both. The spinal nerves, they arise from the spinal cord. Sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, it works pretty much same as it works in our case. Whenever we talk of neural control and coordination, we also talk about the sense organs. So now let us take the sense organs. Frogs have five different types of sense organs, three out of which are not very well organized and two are very well organized. So let us first talk about the senses or sense organs which help in the detection of touch. They are found on skin and they are not very well organized. So, they are like nerve endings covered by some cells. So, suppose this is, these are the nerve endings. So, there is an aggregation of cells and that is how the sense organs are. So, these are nerve endings and surrounding cells. So, not a very well developed structure like when we talk about eyes and ears. Then the second is for taste. That is also not very well organized, very much similar to this. And third is for smell, that is olfaction. So, olfactory epithelium that is in the nasal chamber. So, these are on the tongue for taste. This is in the nasal chamber. These three are similar. Taste on tongue, very much similar like this and olfaction in nasal chamber, again very much similar like this. The other two are well developed, that is for vision. So, they have a pair of eyes, these eyes are bulging and they are, they are simple eyes. not the compound ones. And the fourth one, sorry, the fifth one is for hearing and balancing. These are the hearing and balancing organs. They do not have, frogs do not have external ear, pinna is not there. So, it starts with tympanum, which is the eardrum. Then the middle ear and then the inner ear. So, these are the sense organs and out of which the one for vision and one for hearing and balancing, these two are well developed whereas the first three, they are simple, very simple structures but yes, the frogs do have five different types of structures which help them detection in detection of various types of stimuli. So, nervous system names etc is similar to what we have. Sense organs also similar but not as well developed as we have in our case. So, control coordination, the neural part and the sense organs also. So, this is, helps us understand how neural control and coordination or nervous system 
is present in case of frogs and the sense organs also. 